guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss another video. We are back finally after many, many months of using testing and putting this guy through its paces to talk about the Canon EOS M200 camera. This is my final review of this guy. It's been many months I've been putting this guy through its paces. I've taken it on family vacations, shot a bunch of landscape photography with it. I've shot videos here for the channel for it, and I've taken other photos that I've used in other places like on social media, etc. I'd say I've got a pretty thorough understanding of what this camera can do and what it can't. So first, the EOS M200, what is it? And What's the price point? It's a 24 megapixel APC sensor, dual pixel autofocus built in. It's got an eight image processor, 4K 24 pre video capture. It's got a tilting touch screen, which makes it really easy to see what you're doing. If you're say shooting uh, yourself with the camera, which is a great feature to have, especially for vlogging or vloggers. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in for connectivity and syncing to your devices. And at the time that I bought it, the retail price was about 600 bucks, which is pretty darn cost effective. So then what does the EOS M200 do a very good job at? Well, in good lighting situations, this camera does a very solid job. Ironically, one of the longest trips I've taken this on was to Scotland with my family, and it was rainy and overcast for the entire, almost the entire two week time that I was away. And I will say that for the most part, the EOS M200 actually did a pretty good job handling the landscapes and the lighting situation to the best of its ability. Now, these photos, I personally didn't think were super, super punchy or vivid, but I do think that they were pretty moody. I think it did a good job of capturing the true to life, real situation of the landscape that we were actually in at that time. Outside of full auto, it's a mixed bag. This camera definitely is not the highest end. It definitely doesn't have the best sensors. It definitely doesn't have the best image processing. If I had to put it on scale, I would say, Photography wise, it's just above mid range. It's definitely for the price, a not bad, pretty decent overall shooter. Could it be better? Absolutely. Maybe the problem being that I'm using the default stock lens that came in the box with it. Who's to say? It's just okay. Now, in some of those low light scenarios, it, you do get a lot of grain in the photos. It's not that good for nighttime photography. Definitely not. The full auto mode, again, is really not capable to handle very low light situations. Normal light situations, daytime shooting, it does a pretty darn good job. But for other scenarios, you're probably gonna wanna just whip out your iPhone because I think the sensors on the iPhone or on an Android phone, a modern phone, are just better optimized for our all purpose shooting. Now, I'm a novice when it comes to the actual physical camera space. This is actually the only one I've ever owned in my life. So in terms of actually configuring and manual shooting, I didn't really get too much into that. I was really relying on the auto mode to do the bulk of the heavy lifting for me when I was using this camera in all scenarios. What I really got this camera for was not shooting pictures. It was mainly to be used here on the channel as a backup to my iPhone for video. And this is where my expectations were maybe not quite met. For a stable shot, this camera does more than a good job. When the subject is not moving, when you're shooting, say, on a desk, the video is pretty good. As I said, it's shooting 4K, 24 FPS. The problem is twofold. So one, the camera does crop in quite a bit, about one and a half, 1.75 times, I believe is the number when you switch from photo to video. So you do lose a lot of the outside of your frame. So framing becomes a little bit of a bigger concern. You maybe got to back up to get your full subject in. The other issue is when your subject is moving or you're moving. So again, going back to vloggers with the nice touch screen that flips up but so you can see yourself, the autofocus in the video mode is not the best. I found the EOS M200's video hunting way too much to lock onto my face or the subject I was shooting. And that's really problematic because at the price point that it's at, it really is like the perfect option for somebody getting into the YouTube vlogging video production space. It's priced to move for those people for video, but it really is just a good camera. It's not a great camera. It's not a bad camera. It's just a good camera, but it's not a good video camera. 
If you've got a fixed setup, maybe you can get away with this for your video needs. But for what I do, there's usually me in frame and I would just find that it's focusing on my hand, it pulls away, but then it can't refocus on the object that I'm actually shooting. It didn't quite meet the mustard. It wasn't quite as good. My iPhone, the autofocus was like this. When you change subject in and out of frame, it just switches. It's so quick. And for a standalone camera, it's not quite to the same level that I think the majority of us expect for video. So is it worth the money? I guess it really comes down to what are you going to use it for? I think if you're looking for just get up and shooting some, you know, higher quality, higher resolution photography in certain lighting scenarios, or you are very comfortable using and fiddling with the manual settings to get the situation and the shot that you're looking for, I think you can use this camera. I think this is a great price point introductory camera, as I said, to get into this as a hobby. It's not the best camera out there by any means, but it's good enough to get started. If you want it for YouTube though, I do think you probably want to be looking elsewhere. It's just not quite the video quality, the focus quality. It's just not quite there for your everyday run and gun, get up and make a vlog type of shot. There are better options out there. Maybe they're a little bit more expensive, but there are other players in this space. It's a crowded space, the camera market, especially in the video realm. And I think you could do a little bit better if you really want a dedicated vlogging or video recording capture device. Anyways, that's been my thoughts on the Canon EOS M200. Let me know what you guys think. Do you have one? Do you love it? Are you looking to get into the space and looking at one of these? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Let's have a conversation about this stuff. As always, guys, thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon in the next one.